only retail traders use their own capital. Professional traders do not use their own capital. Hedge fund owners do not use their own capital. All right. The entire industry is built on using other people's capital. And in a world today where capital, the access to capital is cheap, it is even more imperative that you do not use your own capital. You protect your own capital. You save your own capital. You use someone else's capital. This is what this is where I come in. I provide each one of my traders. I start them off with $50,000 of my capital. I tell them to put their capital away. You do not want to risk a single penny of your own capital. You risk my capital. And if it's not me, it's someone else. But this is how the industry is structured. You get funded by an organization or by an individual or by a firm, right? And you're using their capital. Your capital is never at risk. Never. Okay? That's the first step of becoming a professional trader. No professionals use their own capital. So I start traders off with $50,000 and they can go up as far as a half a million dollars and even beyond, okay? Education. No one is going to allow you to trade their capital or work for them or work with them or work in partnership with them unless you really are educated on the ways of proper trading and risk management and things of that nature. So I take two days to basically make sure all of my traders have the appropriate amount of education. Believe it or not, because markets aren't really overly complex, the human beings trading them are complex, but because markets aren't overly complex, it doesn't take a long time to educate, excuse me, to educate traders on what's appropriate to do and not do. I only need two solid days to do that. So education is two days, but training is what a lot of people get mixed up with education. Training never stops and training takes place every single day. And this is what happens in my organization. There is no single day that my traders are not with, is, are not going through some form of training, not going through some form of improvement, not going through some form of development and maturing every single day. This trading comes along with, with guidance. And if you were to work for any firm on Wall Street, trust me when I tell you, you're going to be looked over, you're going to be watched, you're going to be guided, you're going to be trained. Okay? So training takes place every day. Education is one thing. Training is another thing. In the field of, med in the, in the field of medicine, education is when you're in school with the textbooks. The training is when you're in a hospital and you're um, and, and, and you're going through training with real patients and real, real scenarios, okay? That's what we're talking about with training. That's the most important part, actually, even sometimes more important than the educational part. Then you need a structured trading method or plan, okay? No one's going to allow you or you, no one's going to allow you to just go out and just um, fly, fly by the seat of your pants. You're going to have to have a method. You're going to have to have an approach, it has to, you're going to have to have something that has risk parameters in and profit taking roles. It can't just be by your feelings. If you're in this business for any period of time, you understand that when you're trading, your feelings betray you, your thinking betrays you, your beliefs betray you. And because these things betray you on a day to day basis, you need to go beyond your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs. And you need to actually make sure you're applying your actions via well, a well mapped out trading plan or method. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about method today with you because I don't want you to leave any presentation with me, with me without something regarding um, trading method in the market. Okay. And then the last thing you need is a clear trading payout structure. Okay, when you're trading yourself, you get 100% of the gains. But when someone's going to put up the money for you, when you're going to say, I'm going to keep my money protected and I'm going to trade firm capital or I'm going to trade someone else's capital, then you're going to have to go into partnership. It's still your business in a way, but you're going to go into a partnership and those profits have to be split. This is exactly how I started in the business professionally all the way back in the 1980s. I was funded. And I went into partnership with the funded individuals. Okay. Now, here is where I start each one of my traders. First of all, after they get educated, they start off in training. Look at the first row. The first row is training. That is not on the job yet. That is not starting the business yet. 
they go through training. They go through training with a $50,000 practice account. They must demonstrate during their training, okay, every day, okay, or whatever days they can, they go through training and they must demonstrate their ability to accumulate a minimum of $3,000. That is net of all commissions and fees or whatever, right? So they have to come out of their training with $3,000 or more. It can be $6,000, $10,000, $20,000, but it can't be below $3,000. So once a person crosses the $3,000 threshold, they are ready to try for their professional path in trading. Once they do that, they the business begins and they go to level one. Now the $50,000 account is not a practice account. It's a real trading account. And they have the same goal. That goal, as you see, the minimum cumulative profit, which is highlighted here, that goal, $3,000, is what they're going for at level one. Okay, they will get 40% of the gains. Okay, can't get 100%. They're putting no money in and they're risking zero. Okay, they get 40% of the gains. The firm gets 60% of the gains, but the firm takes 100% of the losses. The firm is totally responsible for the losses. The trader will never lose their capital, nor will they ever put have to put a single penny in. And this is the structure that many professional traders use on the street today, in the industry today. They're trading someone else's capital. They're risking none of theirs, but they're getting their start this way on the professional path. And they're getting somewhere between 40 and 60% of the gains. And we'll talk about that. All right. Now, of course, when they reach that $3,000 profit, their account goes from $50,000. If you see very clearly here, their account can go from 50,000 to now 100,000. Now at 100,000, they have a goal of 6,000. Okay. They will continue to get 40% of all gains payable out monthly. All right. The firm will get 60% of the gains. Once they pass $6,000 in gains, okay, they then get 250,000. Now their goal is 10,000. Then once they reach 10,000, they get a half a million dollars and on and on this goes. All right. We have traders um, at the higher end level trading over $40 million in buying power. Okay. So I'm just showing you the first four levels, but this chart or this progress goes all the way. And what's missing on the part of many retail or regular traders trying to do this themselves. They don't have a structured path. There's no roadmap. They're flying by the seat of their pants. They're just hoping that today on Thursday is different from their day on Wednesday if it was bad. There's no structure. There's no goal. There's no maximum loss per day, maximum lo trade, maximum loss per trade. There's no profit goal that they're achieve that they're that they're vying for each trade. Each trade doesn't have a purpose. To them, it's just, I want to make money or lose money, but this is not the professional approach to the markets. Most professional traders who are in the business have a structured progress mapped out very much just like this. Now, I will tell you this, that making $3,000 with $50,000 is not very difficult at all. That's not the hard part. You can do that in an hour, a day, a week. That's not difficult. What's challenging is that you can't make, you have to progress toward $3,000 without ever losing $200 on any given day. Aha, now therein lies the challenge. And once you lose $200 on any given day, once your account goes negative $201, you lose your your trading privileges for that day, your keyboard actually stops working. And you have actually, in my system, you have six seconds to actually liquidate the account. Should you not do what you're supposed to do in six seconds, my algorithms go through an auto shutdown process, meaning every single, on it, without any human intervention, every single stock in your account or what have you is auto liquidated and boom, your keyboard stops working until the very next morning. Okay, I'm generous, but I'm not. I'm not an idiot, right? This is business. So um, you do not want the auto system to shut you down because that will obviously go on your record as having not being, being not done the most important job of all, which is to keep your losses small. 
So you want to make sure that you don't go over the $200 per day while you're progressing. So you want a $300 day, a $600 day, a $100 day, a $50 day, but you don't ever want a losing day to be greater than $200. You can have a $50 losing day, a $100 losing day. Those are all very controllable losses. So you want to inch your way toward that $3,000, but prote while protecting the downside. All retail trade or most retail traders or most traders who are never gone through official professional trading training or education, they're just looking at the gains, but they don't understand that it's a walk of both. While you're reaching for gains, you must also make sure that you don't allow the account to drop below a specific dollar amount. You are judged more by the losing side of the equation than the winning side. I'm not interested in seeing your winning trades. I want to see the list of your last 30 losing trades. And if I take a look at your last losing 30 trades, I can tell what kind of trader you are. I can actually tell what kind of person you are because trading is a microcosmic version of life and you can't be irresponsible in your trading and be responsible in your life. You can't be, you can't lack discipline when it comes to trading and have a tremendous amount of discipline when it, ha when it comes to any other activity in life. They go hand in hand. Discipline is universal. If you have it in trading, you have it in every other period of, of area of your life. And all I can do, all I have to do is look at your last 30 trades and I can tell whether you're disciplined. I can tell whether you keep your word. I can tell whether you do what you say you're going to do in any other category of your life. That's how important this is. Okay. So that's where we're at. That's the structured approach. Every trader starts at training, they graduate, and then they go from level one to level two to level three. And this is how they begin their professional trading career by growing the size of their account, which gives them the ability to earn more and more dollars as they become more seasoned as a trader. Now, remember, they're risking not a single penny of their family's money. Never will they have to put money into an account. All right. They're not responsible for losses. So if any trader leaves the organization, um, leaves this arrangement, decides that this is not for me and their account's negative, that is not on them. They walk away with a handshake and it just didn't work. Okay. And that's the key. You don't want to risk your money. I did not risk my own capital when I first started in the business and neither should you when you take the professional step, okay? All right. Uh, let's go to what's next. Now, let's talk about the trading approach and the method. First, I want you to know that my traders are taught to predominantly rely on a two-minute candlestick chart, all right? So each bar you see here is rep represents two minutes of trading. The red ones represent two minutes that, that have gone down in price. The green bars represent two minutes that have gone up in price. You're looking at a two minute chart of the spiders, um, an ETF that represents the S&P 500 today. This is today's data, okay? So we need a two minute chart. We wanna put a 20 period simple moving average on that chart. That's that blue line I've just put up there. It's a 20 period simple moving average. And I want my traders to always have a 200 period moving average on whatever chart or symbol they ever look at or trade. Okay, now I want you to take a look at these two moving averages, especially toward the left hand side. Okay, I want you to note that there's you you can have your stock above the two moving averages or you can have your stock below the two moving averages. As you can see, as the stock flows, as this chart flows to the right, you can see that the spiders, that's what we call them, the spies, they're basic, it's basically predominantly below the 20, and the 20 is below the 200. So you have the three trending downward, but the stock, let's let me let me let me let me demonstrate this. The stock is under the 20 period moving average, and the 20 period moving average is under the 200 period moving average. So it fans out this way, stock below, no, 200 above, 20 below the 200, stock below them both, okay? This is very important. Let's go to the next scenario, okay? Very important, all right? 
This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about once you have the stock, the 20 and the 200, we need to be able to read what I call position, whether you are above or below. So below is this scenario. We're looking at a two minute chart of a stock called, um, well, the symbol is AMD, uh, Applied Material Devices. All right, and as you can see, the stock opens today. I want you to take a look at this, okay? Here's, this is today's opening two minute bar. It opens below the 200 and it's also below the 20, okay? So your stock is below both moving averages, which tells us that the odds, it's not a guarantee, but the odds are very high that continued downside should occur. If AMD opened above the 200 and the 20 period moving average, the odds would suggest a continuation to the upside. Not a guarantee, just more often than not. That's all we can have in trading is to find something that happens more often than not because nothing happens 100% of the time. Now, here's a scenario above. Now we're talking about position. I want you to take a look at the 20 period moving average. That's the blue line, okay? Take a look at the 20 period moving average. Got the blue line and the 200 period moving average. The stock opens today. Look, this is today's price. The stock opens the first two minute bar of the morning of the day is above both moving averages, suggesting that a continued movement above is more likely than not, okay? All right, so the first concept I teach my traders is position. You have to be able to, you have to, be able to read a stock's position based on these two dominant moving averages, the 20 period moving average and the 200 period moving average, okay? That's concept number one. Now, I can take this concept. I'm going to be very basic and rudimentary today, but you're going to see how it's really, how even with the very basic thing I'm going to share with you today, how you can take the $50,000 that you would get right off the bat and use this $50,000 to grow your profitability virtually every week of your life. Now, let's go. Now, position below AMD, all right? Now, how do we play when a stock opens for the morning below? We must, it must give us a strong red bar below. Here's the red we need below. If we open above, I want to see a nice green bar above. But below, I want to see a red bar below. Once the stock gives me a red bar, I'm willing to go in. Okay? I'm willing to go in. I'm also willing to go in when a red bar eliminates a green bar. Take a look at this red bar. This red bar trades below the low of this green bar. I'm willing to go in there as well. So I want you to understand the two ways we go in. We go in on a strong red bar, okay? We go into the strong red bar, or we go into a red bar that is eliminating the low of a green bar. So. Once again, we've got two scenarios here. Here we go into the red bar. We also go into a red bar that is eliminating the low of a green bar. And here is our move to the downside. Now this move here for a trader can be a $200 gain, a $250 gain. It can be a $400 gain, depending upon the size or how much of the $50,000 they put into that play, okay? Some traders will put the whole $50,000 in. Some pay traders will put $25,000 in. Now, how would they determine that? They would determine that based on the risk. So if the trader is going into this red bar, 
below the low of this green bar, they're going to put their protection above the bar that they're trading. If they go into this bar, they're going to put their protection above this bar. Notice how this risk is bigger than this risk. So this might be half of the $50,000, and this might be 100% of the $50,000 because the risk, if you're wrong, is smaller. Okay, so this trade might produce something much larger than the trade from here if you're only doing one half. Okay, all right. So there are traders that put the whole $50,000 in as long as the risk is contained within the plan. So they're not going to lose more than that $200, right? Okay. Some traders might decide, look, I don't want to risk the whole $200 on one trade. I'm going to trade half and lose $100 or what have you. All right. But I'm explaining to you a rudimentary method based on position going into a solid red bar or going into a red bar that eliminates green stop or protection above the bar you're playing and go okay now here's the let's let's look at something else let's look at the next thing here here is paypal today all of these charts are from today okay what i did was i went through the most popular i took i i went through um, my risk management system today, and I found the most traded stocks from my trading team. And so AMD was one of the top traded stocks today. PayPal was another top traded stock today. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't, it shouldn't surprise you now why. If they've been taught to find stocks that are opening under on a weekday, under the 200, under the 20 period moving average. And then they're waiting for a solid red bar to dive into the red bar or to dive into a red bar that is eliminating a green bar. And so we get, we don't get a red bar first, but the, but we, on the third bar, we get a red bar that is eliminating the low of a green bar. So boom. That is where the traders piled into PayPal. And if this risk, depending upon how much risk this is, they would risk a half of the 50,000, all of the 50,000, a quarter or a third of the 50,000. Those are things they work out based on their maximum loss per day. And as you can see, there's your gain. $50,000 in here, coming out somewhere down near the low or even down here if you rode this out. It's a pretty decent gain over a short period of time. And this can produce a very nice living if you do this consistently. Okay, now let's continue. Let's take a look. Um, here's Apple. Apple's one of the most popularly traded stocks amongst my traders is probably the number one traded stock of all of my traders, Apple. Now, Apple this morning, you, you should know this by now, Apple this morning opens below the 200 period moving average and the 20 period moving average. But listen, it produces not a red bar, it produces a green bar. What do you do if you're below, but you have a powerful green bar? You do nothing. You remember, you need a powerful red bar or a red bar that is wiping out or eliminating a green bar. And when does this green get eliminated? Right there. Boom. Many of my traders piled into Apple on this bar. Once the red eliminates green because we're below the moving averages, then they add to Apple on the next elimination of green here. So if they put one half of the 50,000 into Apple there, they put the other half on the second signal and and if they manage to ride this out again, okay? And many traders will actually continue to do this. They will boom, the first one, boom, the second one. See this green bar here? When does this green bar get eliminated? Boom, they start again. 
And so I'm a very big, I'm a very big stickler for combining the right bars in the right position to stack the odds in your favor of the stock following through. Okay. I'm a big stickler for that. My traders know that. Um, which means they get into trouble when they start playing the wrong position. They, so they're they're playing down when the stock is above. What are you doing? Or they're playing up when the stock is below. So take a look at this, guys. Take a look at uh, Walmart today. This was a very pot. This was one of the top stocks traded amongst my traders today. Walmart. Okay. Now notice that we open under, but it's not a strong red. It's kind of a neutral red. It's a little red. So they do nothing. Now, some traders would see this bar and be tempted to play up. But my traders know it is best not to play up. We play up above the moving averages. We play down below the moving averages, right? So what do we need to wait for? We need a red to wipe out or eliminate a green. So the traders stalked it. This green did not get eliminated. This green did not get eliminated. This green did not get eliminated. Which green got eliminated? Right here. Boom. Traders pile in on the elimination. Stop. Look how tight the stop is on the bar that you play. Now, many traders made a ton on this play because the risk was so small. They put everything in. Okay. And rode this out. Now I won't get into how you ride and when you take profits and, and stuff like that. I just want to keep this basic because it's really about setting up a trading business so you can do this with zero risk to your family's funds. Okay. Um, but this was, this was huge today. This was huge today for us. Now, um, let's take a look at above. I just don't want to look at things below. Uh, Nike was heavily played today. Why? First bar of the day, power green bar above the moving averages. They pile into this bar. Now, because of the risk is so, so big, they're not piling in with a big portion of the account. But pff, there's the run right there. Very, very nice. And another one today was... I can uh, clear, boom. Not clearing though. Clear all, okay. Here is a Verizon was a popular one as well. Why? Power green bar above the 20, above the 200, pile into the green bar, protection below, add on the next time green eliminates red right there, Boom, another small protection there on the ad. I love that sound. All right, yeah, boom, okay, very nice game. That was another popular one today. All of this is today, guys. All of this is today. I'm not grabbing or cherry picking from a variety of days, it's today. Um, Merck was played as well, guys, in this presentation, you might have some of my traders who might be able to tell you, I played that today. I played that today. I invited some of my traders, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I'm not reading the comments, but some of them might be here and say, that's my play. That's my play. All right. Now, here is very strong, powerful green bar. Okay. You're above the 20, above the 200. It didn't start there, but it ended there. That's fine. It's really based on where it ends. Okay. Pile into the bar, protect yourself. Some of the traders added here. This is what we call a pause event. Can't talk about that in detail now, but boom, and pff, there's your move. And then the very next time, when does the next time green take out red again? Well, here's red. Green takes out red right there. Boom, try it again. Here's your risk. And we go just a little bit higher. Okay. So Merck was another interesting play amongst the traders today. And then there's a WFC. This was a really nice one. Um, beautiful starting bar above. Take a look at this. So 
First bar of the morning starts above the 20, above the 200. I couldn't draw a more perfect bar than that, okay? Boom, buy the bar, stop. Your protection is relatively small. And the run was very, very decent. Now, when's the next time that a red bar gets eliminated? Really sort of here. Red bar. We're eliminating the red bar. Boom. Small risk. And there's a secondary run in the stock. All right. But um, just these two concepts of two moving averages, position above, position below, piling into the first strong bar or piling into the bar that eliminates the opposite color, protecting yourself based on the very bar that you're entering to determine how much of the $50,000 you put at risk. And all of a sudden, you're not trading like a freaking regular retail trader anymore. You're not, you're trading with a plan, with an approach, with a system, with a system, with risk management. And then of course we need to add profit taking guidelines and trailing guidelines. And when do you add and by how much and when it's not appropriate to add anymore. Those are things we delve into and get you taught and educated on those things. But just what I'm sharing with you today is if you had the proper amount of capital the right structure to operate in, you could dramatically increase your odds of turning this into your business. All right. There's not many businesses that give you the ability to start without ever risking your own capital, but trading is one of them. All right. Met guys, just another one very quickly opens today above the moving averages pile into the bar risk below the bar add when the green takes out red. Okay. All right. And you can see multiple times here, greens taking out red, greens taking out red. But this run is very nice in the stock. Okay. Nothing touches your stop out point. <sighs> Love that sound. Love that sound. Okay. All right. And Citibank, um, a lot of your financials did do very well. So, um, my traders were all over the financials today. Uh, Citibank here, boom, strong bar, stop under the bar, okay? Green takes out red. When does green remove red? See the red and green trades above the red. See the red, green trades above the red. <sighs> Love that sound. <laughs> all right, okay. So, you know, um, and don't just think that you have to trade the open, although a lot of my traders focus on the open. Many of my traders have done 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and they're off for the day. Two, three trades, done, finish, kaput. 20 minute trading day, 25 minute trading day, 35 minute trading day, and they're off. And it's their business. Remember, this is not you working for me. This is you working for you but I'm investing in your business. That's the way it should be looked at. Or if not me, another firm is investing in your business. No one tells you when to trade, how often to trade, whether to take the day, whether you can take the day off or not. That's all your business. I have traders that trade once a week. I have traders that trade 20 minutes a day and, they, and, and then they're off doing something else that they care about. It's their choice how often to trade, when to trade, all right? I invest in their trading business they have to operate based on the structure, of course, and we share the profitability. I take 100% of the losses, all right? I take 100% of the losses if the trader leaves and says, I don't want to do this anymore, and the account's negative, it's my loss. That I look at that as my fault for not being able to get the trader up to par, basically for the most part. Um, but, but you can continue to trade throughout the day. Like here's the spiders chart. I showed you in the beginning of the presentation, right? Look at the 20 print moving average. Look at the 200. Now look at the spiders. This is two o'clock Eastern time, New York time, right? Now, when does the stock get below the moving averages and when does red eliminate green? Look, green, red eliminates green below the moving averages. Boom. When does 
red eliminate green again. Boom. When does red eliminate green again? Boom. When does red eliminate green again? Boom. When does red eliminate green again? Boom. Right. These are all opportunities. Red eliminating green. Red eliminating green. Red eliminating green. You get the point. When you know position and you know when to strike in that position and you know how to keep your losses small with the right protection point, there's not a lot left to put together. It just becomes a numbers game at that point. What most people do, even if they have a method, is that they're trading with inappropriate levels of capital, which makes the game virtually impossible. You can't show up to a gunfight with a knife and think you're gonna win. You cannot show up to the professional trading market with a little tiny baby account and think you're gonna pit yourselves against these big traders with big accounts. And it's just, you're making the game much harder. You need to be well capitalized. It's said that the vast majority of businesses throughout the world fail for lack of proper capital. They're not funded well. I would say the same thing goes for the trading business. Most people are out here fooling around with two, three thousand, five thousand dollars, and it's a guaranteed way to continuously lose. You need proper capital. You need proper capital. And so that's why most traders actually, when they want to take the professional stance, they go to a firm um, or an organization that provides the funding. Every professional trader, I don't even, even the billionaire ones have hedge funds that other people put money in. No one uses their capital, not at, on the professional side. That's more of a retail thing. Use my own capital, right? First of all, there's more capital. If you've got a million dollars, but I can give you $5 million, won't you make more? Even though you get less, won't you make more on the 5 million than once you make more on less of the 5 million than you will on 100% of the million, of course. If you got $3,000, but I can give you $50,000, but, but I share. So you get less of the gains on $50,000, but that's still more than 100% of the gains on $3,000. All right, so you get, you get the point. No one uses their own capital when, it, when they take the professional approach. So guys, look, you can do this. The programs that I offer come with a very small cost, guys. Look, $1,700 to get the $50,000 account, to get educated on all the tactics, techniques, to be trained and guided and be assigned to a top trader that looks over you every single day, guiding you every single day, developing you every single day forever. $1,700, you can lose that in one trade. We're talking about one fee for life. Now, this $1,700 to start this program is actually $1,300 today, at least, okay? So for $1,300, guys, you don't have to put $25,000 into a Robinhood account. You don't ever have to put another penny in, $1,300 and you're done. And you'll be guided, trained, trained, educated, and funded, starting with 50, then 100, then 250, then a half a million, and beyond. And you will never have to risk a single penny beyond $1,300 in your life. That's insane. This was not the structure when I started, but look at where we've come today. All right? I had to put up 40,000. It was supposed to be 50 but the firm gave me a break. So I put up actually $44,000 instead of $1,300, okay? So $1,300 is what you put up. Now, here's the thing. Remember I told you that you get 40% of the gains, the firm gets 60% of the gains, right? Now check this out. You're gonna get 100% of the gains until you get your $1,300 back. So the firm doesn't share and anything until your whole investment is back. And now everything is free. The whole program, you made it free. You got your $1,300 back. Now we go into business. You get 40%, I get 60%, or the firm gets 60%. But check this out. I will give you 60% 
If you join us, if you join my family, I will give you 60% if you join within the next 48 hours. So not only will you be the, not only will you get 100% of your gains until you get the entire upfront cost back. And now it's nothing. There's no cost, right? Then I'm going to give you the majority partnership in the business. You're going to get the majority of the gains. You're going to have the majority part of the partnership. You're going to get 60%. I'll get 40%. The firm will get 40%, right? And you start off with 50,000 and you can work yourself all the way up to millions of dollars if you hit those thresholds. This is how I started back in the mid 1980s. I had to put up capital to start. All right. And I've structured this the same way that firms structured it on Wall Street back in the day. All right. And you can do this. This is the way to try. Now, look, what's your risk? $1,300. It's a dinner with all of your family and a couple of good bottles of wine. That's it. If it doesn't work, your risk is $1,300. If you do this on your own, traders, all right? Check this out. You do this on your own. This is your business. I'm going to show you something. You need $25,000 at a minimum. If you lose $1 below $25,000, you can't day trade the way I'm teaching you to do so. If you go short, you're going to have to pay margin interest of 5 to 7%. None of that exists here. Okay? If you do it with me, it's $1,300, which you can get all back. There is a fee for real-time data. This every professional trader goes through this, a fee for your platform. All right? This platform and the real-time data, the markets charge every trader for real-time data. That's $4 a day. So you have to ask yourself, can you get good enough to make more than $4 on average a day? And if the answer is yes, this is not even lunch. This is a freaking Starbucks coffee. If you can afford, if you can trade better, Trade it well enough to earn a $4 Starbucks coffee a day, then the $4 cost is nothing to a professional trader, $4 a day. But $1,300 versus putting $25 or $30,000 into an account and paying margin interest of 5 to 7%, none of that exists here. So I strongly encourage that if you're willing, if you're ready, if you think you're ready, in this crazy world that we're living in right now, to take the step of trying to do this professionally, doing it the right way, under the proper guidance, with, with a professional firm, without risking your family's savings or money. I strongly encourage that you inquire about this. I've got staff on, on, on hold, ready to answer any questions you have. I hope that what I've shared with you today, traders, um, uh, was meaningful in a variety of different ways. Every time I'm given the ability to um, speak from a microphone, I do my very best to leave you with something that I think can potentially affect your life forever. I hope I've done that today. And once again, thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you next time. All right, Oliver. Fantastic presentation Thanks, once Mark. again, sir. Have a great thank one. You. Thank you, guys. Ciao. All right, everyone, a big thank you for that presentation once again from Oliver Velez. Uh, it's always a pleasure to hear him speak.